until someone is investing in you with their time, their energy, or their finances. Until someone has told you that they want to see you exclusively. Until someone has shown you they are committed to you by either putting a ring on your finger or giving you a key to their house, you owe them nothing. Yeah, it sounds pretty ruthless, but if you look around the world, ruthless people have a tendency to get what they want. The trick to learn is standing up for your boundaries in a way that, although it tells the other person you mean business, you are still interested in a potential relationship with them. The people who are not right for you or looking for somebody that they can use and abuse, they'll show themselves out pretty quickly. But the people who are attracted to other people who also have self-respect will not be put off simply because you set a healthy boundary. Hello friends, my name is Maria and for almost 20 years I thought boundaries were mean. But that was back when I really didn't understand what a boundary was. And as a result, I had no life filter for the people I surrounded myself with, the kind of friends I had, the kind of people I worked for, and the kind of people that I let in and trusted with my anxious heart. Well, that is until the day I finally saw the light. Boundaries are not only more attractive, but they help you stay detached in the beginning of the dating phase so you can really get to know somebody. Dating is supposed to be fun. It's a process that's simply for getting to know people. People make more commitments to other people who have standards because they know they're not gonna be able to mess you around. They're gonna have to step up or get out of the way if they wanna continue to have you in their life. So if you are ready to stand out to that person you are interested in while still standing up for yourself with your boundaries, then grab a bottle of nail polish and let's talk. One of the biggest things I look back at and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so silly. Why did I feel like I needed to do that? Was texting a guy every single morning to wish him good morning. For some reason, even if I didn't feel like it, I felt like I had to text them. Otherwise it was mean or they would feel like I was ignoring them. This was a huge mistake and total backwards thinking when it comes to attraction. Mystery is attractive. The buildup in between dates is attractive. You know what someone is doing when you're not texting them every morning or every day, all day long? They're wondering about you. Texting someone every single morning like clockwork makes them way too comfortable that they've got you in their pocket way too soon. Now I'm not a fan of playing games, but a little push and pull at the beginning of a relationship isn't a bad thing because it's way less attractive if you're constantly throwing yourself at someone, making them think already that you're always going to be there for them. Oh, in the worst case scenario, you could make this person feel like they don't know you that well and you're already smothering them. It's more attractive for men and women to think that you're not texting them all the time because you have a life, you have missions, you have goals, you've got things that you are doing and other priorities during the day. These are people where they really shouldn't be a priority because you don't know them very well yet, which means you should already have a routine and life and work and priorities before you ever even met them. And that's okay. It's not mean to not check in with somebody every single hour or every single morning or even every single day. It's actually pretty dangerous to begin incorporating someone into your daily life every day that you don't know that well and they might totally disappear on you and then you've gotten used to having someone there on your phone when you wake up in the morning or you get used to having someone to talk to first thing in the morning. Get used to putting yourself first. Get used to taking care of yourself and your priorities until the day that that person makes an actual commitment to you. But I have to be honest with you, even to this day, there is no one in my life that I ever text first thing in the morning because I'm on my mission. I'm starting my day. I finally learned to begin to put myself first. I have the confidence that just because I'm not talking to someone all day long doesn't mean they don't want to talk to me and that we won't get together later and talk about our day. Just keep in mind, 
it's not mean to not answer them back right away. Not to mention that you should never feel like you have to send someone a text message to make them feel safe in a relationship even when you don't feel like it. You don't know them that well. You don't owe them the safety of knowing that you'll always be there for them. This is how we accidentally get over invested in relationships and also making someone else a daily habit is not a good way to remain detached. Quite the opposite. In fact, you're going to accidentally make them a habit and then you're going to get attached to someone way too soon. You're going to get used to them being there. So in a month, if the relationship doesn't work out, you're going to feel the loss of them not being there much more deeply. And if you meet someone online and you have not met them in person yet, absolutely no more pen pal texting. I honestly think online dating is like the bane of an anxious person's existence because way to feel like someone can just completely swipe you away. And if you have attachment wounds and abandonment issues, this is fuel to feel constantly discarded and rejected because that's the nature of those apps. I naively used to think that people who were trying to date other people online had every intention of meeting them in person. It's not true. Some people are only looking for half relationships. Some people are only looking for the validation of having someone else answer a text. Some people are already in relationships that they are bored with, so they use their work day to text that cute girl or guy online. Some people are really only looking for pen pals. I used to think if I met someone online and they sent me a text and I didn't answer it or I didn't answer it right away, oh, it was so mean and I could potentially lose that person. I don't even know them. I've lost nothing. A good boundary and a good way to stay detached is you make it a hard rule that if you have not met a person in person, face to face, you do not text them every day. You do not text them all day long and they have to meet you within two weeks face to face or they're out. Something I think ended up being a really good boundary. I personally stopped sending any photos of myself to guys I was dating. If they wanted to see me that badly, they were welcome to text me, call me, make a date to see me in person. If you've never met before, then you've probably seen me online. I've put up all the pictures I'm comfortable putting up. And if you want to see more, well, again, you can see me in person. I set this boundary after one instance where I had been out on a date with a guy. We had such a good time and I really thought that we were going to continue pursuing a relationship with one another. Now after our first date, I hadn't heard from him in about a week, which already should have probably told me something, but I went charging ahead. I sent him a text with a shameless selfie telling him that I had a great time and I sure like to see him again and I had a big smile on my face just for him. He completely ghosted me. <laughs> And even though it was not in any way an inappropriate picture, it still feels inappropriate because I didn't really know that guy. And even though he completely ditched me, he now has a picture of my smiling face just for him for the rest of his life. I don't know. I thought it was a good picture. I try not to take it too personally, but Welcome to the other half where we know attraction is not just about looks because even though I was happy and smiley in that picture, the energy behind it was pretty desperate. Like, hey, I know we had a first date and I haven't heard from you and it's been all crickets. I'm still here. Don't you think I'm cute? It's not the way to go. And I will say I've had more than one guy send me pictures like, wish you were here and they they are making cute faces and honestly it looks like you're trying to convince someone to be with you and if you have to convince someone to be why are you someone who has to convince people to be with you don't people just want to be with you because it's a hell of a lot more attractive when you think that you're talking to someone that other people want to be around well these are some of the boundaries that i used to think were mean but 
They're just good sense and they help you stay detached. And if you enjoy the subject of dating with a happier, more secure and confident mindset, please subscribe, share this video with someone who you know is struggling with confidence in their dating life because goodness knows I wish I had known this stuff years ago. I wish I had known that boundaries are hot. It's hot when you date like you have standards and self-respect. It's not so hot when you date like anything goes by Essie Nails. My name is Maria Adriana. You did not have to live my life, but I certainly hope you can learn something from it. Thank you for visiting the other half.